Welcome to Detox Living, where we bring you truths, tips, and testimonials to power your toxic-free living. I am your host, Coach Jesse, founder of thedetoxnow.com, a holistic health platform that provides education and supplements that combat the disparities that lead to chronic disease, inflammatory conditions, reproductive health conditions, and lower life expectancy rates. So our topic for tonight is why you don't have to be vegan to be healthy. And I'm so excited to have this conversation with my partner in health, Martin Dr. Amun Benjamin, who's going to join us to really unpack this conversation. As you know, he is the um, nutritionist and master herbalist that actually formulates all of our supplements for thedetoxnow.com. And so we're getting into a meaty conversation. A meaty conversation. A meaty conversation. All right, so listen. Is it grass fed? Is it organic? Better be both. Better be both. Antibiotic, anti hormone free. I mean, that's right. That's right. Come on, man. So, listen, you know, why, after so many years, because this is what people are asking, are you promoting, you know, after so many years of promoting a plant based lifestyle, we've been on Breakfast Club, we've been, you know, a lot of media platforms talking about a plant based lifestyle. And, you know, it says, why are we promoting, um, ways for people to incorporate meat, right? And while many people are thrilled about this, I mean, some people are like, woohoo, <laughs> right? Wait, wait. But some people are like, is this a conflict? And we got to clear this up. Yeah, we got to clear Number one, we're not, we're not promoting one lifestyle versus the other. Or even right? better than the other. We're not saying one is better than the other. What we simply are doing is understanding as we evolve in our research and our studies is, well, you can't just be vegan and plant-based and that's the best um, dietary plan for health. It's just not. Not for everyone. Not for for everyone. Not for everyone. Over the years, we've had clients and they've been suffering and you can, you know, I, you know, by just doing the post you did, how many came out and how many DMs I got. Yes. <laughs> but they've been plant-based and they've been suffering because it's not one stamp or one diet that fits all. You know, to turn around and say everybody should be vegan or every black person should be vegan or plant-based is absolutely ridiculous. Right. Absolutely so what ridiculous. I, so, so what I hear you saying very clearly is that you know, as we continue going down very heavily on the research front, we're looking at, wait a minute, hold on a second. This is things that are not adding up. We need to make sure that, hold on, it's not a one size fits all. And right. then there are people who, number one, there are people who eating plant-based doesn't work for them. Because, period. Right. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even talking medically. Like I'm talking about, let's deal with the Genetically, fact just like, genetically. Genetically. Yeah, right? it's just not, you know, you, you've got to look at your genome like, keyboards on a um like music on a keyboard right and you and you i mean and within your genome you will have certain keys or certain genes that might be diabetes high blood pressure arthritis etc and if you just live and i'm just giving a simple it's much more technical than what i'm explaining but by just living a certain american standard diet and being in certain environments and exposed to certain and toxins it can trigger off one of those it can start playing those keys right so now that gene becomes active in the gmo and you now start facing that health condition of whether it's diabetes high blood pressure obesity etc right so even if you and i just want to get this out of the way even if you are just black and it's and this thing about black people shouldn't eat meat or we can't digest meat or we have a different metabolism to uh-huh. the other races on the planet. It's just a lot of pseudoscience. That's absolutely crap. Pseudoscience you, is crap. It's crap. It's exactly. Crap. Because even with pseudoscience, there is some science, right? Right. And facts there. But you have to realize 
that you have your own physiology, makeup, blueprint. How do we know that? Even though like you come from a large family that has multiple siblings, right? Same mom, same dad. But guess what? How you have a portion of your own individual gene structure and makeup that's just for you. How do we know oh, okay. this? So how do I we know this? this? To simplify this is this, your fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a unique fingerprints. Where do you think that comes from? It's part of your genetics. genetics. So what I hear you clearly saying is that it really is, even within a family, everybody's body is different, right? Everybody's Does. body is different and requires something different. So there, and there's also a preference. There are certain people who just, no matter what you say, they're, they're like, no, I'm not going to stop. I love me. I'm not. So the issue is if this is your dietary choice, number right. one, we want to equip you with the guidelines Come to the detox so now. that you, you, right. So that you can specifically make the right choices to eat healthy for your dietary choice. Secondly, how, secondly is there are certain concerns, which is what the next question was going to be is that so we know people are going to eat some people want to eat meat and if that's their choice we want to make sure they have health guidelines the proper health guidelines that's right correct and then the second is some people it's actually not healthy for them to be um meat, meat right. I, i'll even say so i'll use my my example right so i have uh two chronic conditions one being uh kidney disease right, right? as well as a uh, gut chronic condition, which it actually came from many years of surgeries that left me with small bowel obstructions, Absolutely. which we talked about in the last IG, right. that led to less than three feet of small intestine. Right? right. So because of that, plants are much easier for my body to digest. Well, this is what I was going to say. Right. So, so in, in my condition, I am still and, that based y'all. And even if, even if you've got, so, one of the two main organs that help with the metabolism and breaking down of protein besides your digestive system is the kidney and the liver. Mm -hmm. So even a healthy kidney and a healthy liver still can struggle, okay, if you overindulge right. in your intake of meat. Right. Especially if the meat that you're eating is prepared the wrong way, right. you know, high, and just full of toxins right. of the seasoning and, and badly prepared. And... So when we face people that have kidney issues or liver issues or even digestive issues, we might have to say to them, well, you know what? You can't eat meat or, or you have to have a minimum portion of right. lean protein. And that's, right? why, and that's why a meal plan is customized in our every, yeah, for that's every why in individual. Our we specifically the, help to create, customize if that's the case that's needed for you, right? Because absolutely. there are people who they said, in fact, in the comments, they were like, Oh my goodness, I actually started getting sick eating plant-based. What does that look like? Right. And well, this is the thing. People say food is our medicine, right? Well, and that's is. true. It is. And that's true. Mm -hmm. And people say you are what you eat. But there's also another thing that a lot of people don't say is you have to eat what your body can handle. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, when we say that, you have to say, well, what do you mean by that? And what I mean by that is there's people out there that are eating what they call healthy or whole food or real food, but they have issues, digestive issues, immune issues, right? Kidney or liver issues that can be interfering on how the body absorbs and digests and process the food. So even though they're eating things, you know, organic, broccoli, broccolini, zucchini, etc., they're still getting sick. Sick, they're losing weight, they're feeling fatigued, they're having uterine fibroids or endometriosis, mm -hmm. they're still be highly inflammatory, they're getting arthritis, and they're not seeing any benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not necessarily the food, there's something going on something within the body. It could the be the structure the of the body. Yeah, right. it could be and, and we need to then start looking into that. Right. So this is why we say, and in the studies, this is why we had to introduce it, because we wouldn't be doing ourselves any justice. Mm -hmm. We could have called ourselves a nutritionist or whatever if we didn't introduce well you know what this is also good for you eating meat you can also be healthy and let's look at this word when we say holistic mm -hmm. because that's what really wind people up yes, because people think please. the word holistic mm -hmm. means vegan plant-based you know 
frankincense, crystals, and I'm not taking anything away from it, but that is not right. That is not holistic. Holistic means you're dealing with the whole Body. being. Spirit, so you're dealing body. with the physical yeah. and the psychological. Yeah. You're dealing with the mental. Like that's why we do coaching because you've got to get the mental. Mental health is right. just as detrimental right. as our physical yeah. health. That's holistic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we take a holistic approach. And holistic also includes integrative, which means traditional medicine, um, natural medicine, whatever is needed specifically for right. you. So, so, we're, so we're dealing with the whole body as a whole. We're not just looking at one part or one organ or one system. We look because we know everything is connected. Yeah. Everything you know, react, it's like a knock-on effect. So mm -hmm. when one is in a dysfunctional, it's going to cause a knock-on effect yeah. to another system, to another organ, and so on. So we had to, we had to, if we're going to be totally transparent, to introduce the health benefits of eating meat. Mm -hmm. We just had to. But we, we had to say, listen, if you want to eat meat and eat meat the best way, then come to us. If you want to be a vegan, and be vegan, because let's face it, there's a lot of unhealthy vegans. Yeah. Oh, all of this, oh yes all yes. of this beyond me processed impossible food, meat, processed processed vegan food. food. Yes. yeah now you know what the problem is with process and synthesizing food is that it takes away what the body is supposed to do naturally of mm. the food you eat mm -hmm. your cells are supposed to synthesize your digestive system with the enzymes are supposed to process it and go from different layers of digestion and different phases of digestion before it gets distributed out one going into the anal and your stool and the other uh, goes into uh, the bloodstream. Uh, okay, stop. Right? Let's, let's go back for a second, okay? okay. Because we, we're hitting a couple things. One is that um, when we talked about vegan, right, okay. there are people who may want to be vegan because they just don't believe in eating animals. And that is absolutely well, that's right. So original. That's so let's go back. That's let's be clear. That's or vegan had nothing to do with health. The original oriented of vegans, the, the origin, origination, the origin. right, was to do with animal cruelty. There you go. Right? So they mm -hmm. didn't want to wear anything that had any form of animal flesh mm -hmm. or substance in it, from mm -hmm. clothing to products mm -hmm. and whatever. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have the best of diets. They didn't have the best of diets, right? But for some, along the, along the way, you know, the food industry said, and check this out, the food industry said, we can make money from it. And make plant-based. We can make money oh, from this, right? Mm -hmm. with, with veganism and plant-based. And they purposely, and I honestly think these companies, these food companies purposely, especially women, targeted women to say, hey, you want to have a better right. cycle? Yeah. You don't want to get endometriosis. You don't want to get uterine fibroids. You don't want to get infertility. You don't want to get breast cancer. Then guess what? Be a vegan. Mm. Be plant-based. But and then they introduce like, soy-based wow, foods, wow. soy-based foods that actually create more estrogen dominance. Well, now you're right? Turn into soy, but right. So what was the alternative? Well, here's soy and here's tofu, right. and then they gave you the conventional processed version of soy and tofu. Right. Not even the fermented. The fermented version of tofu is much healthier choice to have. Mm -hmm. But they gave you a processed form. So what did that do? That started to spike up your estrogen yeah. levels, right. which then you became yeah. hormone imbalance. Yeah. And when that started to happen, well, then you were prone to breast cancer, endometriosis, right. uterine fibroids, PCOS, et cetera. You know, it just, it's just horrible. Your cycles were heavy, cramps, headaches, et cetera. Now, the food industry said, well, here, take this plant-based and take this being a vegan and to do it. And they made money mm. from it. They've made millions. Right. They've made millions from it. They've made millions. And it's not necessarily right. So we want to just clear this up. We're not saying one is better than the other or the other is healthier than the other. I noticed when you put the post out, there was people coming in talking about Dr. Sebi, talking about this, talking about that, saying, you know, the most high made our DNA specifically not to consume <laughs> meat. Yeah, right. uh, I mean, there was, just, there was a lot of, right. a lot of nonsense mentioned we are just simply saying that if you want to eat meat mm -hmm. then there, there is a healthier way, to, way into your to eat meat to right. incorporate to your diet and guess what you can still be healthy and, and you can still have a holistic approach to your health 
by incorporating meat. That's right. Okay. So that's all we're saying in a nutshell. So we, we, you know, we updated our food list, which is, you know, again, when you sign up for our newsletter, you'll get that kind of information, um, as well as, you know, understand that we customize through the consultations we customize meal plans for you specifically like sometimes people are like well I, i'm a flexitarian i want to be more plant-based because right. i feel good but i may want to start um having you know some meat or or they want to they or the other way they eat a lot of meat and they want to, to actually reduce some of it so another question was what are like the goals and health concerns we should consider when consuming meat on a holistic lifestyle. Like, you know, it, it, when you said earlier, you know, there are reasons why you may not eat um, a, a fully plant-based diet. Why would somebody need meat specifically? I mean, they, if they, they can start being iron deficient, protein deficient. Mm -hmm. There is a number of things of them to start incorporating meat. And most of it is to do with energy. It's the right. dense nutrition. Dense nutrition. Nutrition. Dense nutrition means now I'm getting a better source of things of like my omega-3, mm -hmm. magnesium, uh, selenium, zinc, vitamin D. It's a lot of nutrients in one place. Right. The, right. List, the list goes on vitamin A, vitamin E, you know, and the, that's one of the reasons why some people will find that having or incorporating meat back into the diet, they feel a, a, a boost of energy and vitality, mm -hmm. they feel good, as well as supplementation, you know, because even with your um, incorporating meat, you're still not going to get everything at its fully value, so you still need to supplement as well, okay? okay? But, you know, this is another thing, we wasn't saying to eat junk meat, we wasn't saying to yeah, eat... So that was my oh. next question, so let's be clear, <laughs> right. the reason there are guidelines, because it's not just, hey, I'll eat fried chicken, right. you know, let, let's, let's unpack that some, right. because it's like, wait a minute, there's barbecuing and grilling, oh, like there's certain things that actually, it can be grass-fed and it's going to toxify, right? right? So and, you, you... and then there's some foods that hey, you want to make sure the reason we said, let's, let's unpack two things. Let's start with that. And then I'll go to the next question. Right. So the pro so processes, what, so the, yeah. world, the reason I'm bringing this up is because the World Health Organization, people brought up, classifies meat as a carcinogen. Somebody right. brought up. Well, first so, of all, we have to debunk that right. and so explain that study, what to make it unhealthy. So, so that study that the World Health Organization did in 2015 from Harvard University, Okay, when you look at studies, you have a hierarchy, right? And that was at the lowest level of a study, meaning it was as a editorial, education, expert opinion. Okay. That's all. Okay. There was no actual proof. real substance or proof or facts behind it. Okay. The only thing that, and they, and they also addressed it like this. They said processed red meat. Well, we know right. processed food so is define no good. Fine process. Right, okay. we know that processed food it's just a mixture of foods together, synthesized, and stripped from all its nutritional value right. to be cheap. And so we're talking it's a conventional meat. method. We're talking deli meat. We're talking about meat that's been, it, um, you know, barbecued, fried right. as well. What else are we right. And But then also, and when they talked about red meat, they did talk about, so even if you get grass-fed, you made a good point, even if you get some grass-fed lamb, grass-fed steak, but you barbecue it or you cook it at high, very high temperatures with vegetable or sea oil or castor oil, you know, barbecue sauce that's got, that that, that's got cane sugar or pure sugar in it as a part of your seasoning and everything. But then it lets off these toxic chemicals in there. And those toxic chemicals in there, when they get into you, when you start um, consuming, right, and ingesting, they now those toxins going into the bloodstream can turn to be carcinogen. There you go. And it can lead to colon cancer. So, okay. So that's very clear. We're talking about, it's actually, now, if the meat is, is hormone, if the, if the meat is not grass-fed and organic, right, to start with, then it's got t hormones, it's got other things, like that, antibiotics, steroids, those are toxins. Worms, so those I mean, are toxins, right? Those are toxins. Those are toxins. Are toxins. Right. No question. So we're not saying now, People think, oh, I can go to McDonald's or I can go to my Caribbean shop on the corner, 
cool <laughs> runnings or whatever and buy some arcs tail right. and that because Coach Jesse and Dr. Clear Amon said, no, 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 we, we, we got to clear. No, we're not saying yeah. that. Um, Even when we get these wild salmon or grass fed or anti, anti hormonal or antibiotic and mm -hmm. um, free range turkeys and Natural chickens, raised. right, naturally raised, there's a way of preparing them as well. Okay? Which is what we, we recommend That's bake, right. steamed, boiled, or slightly grilled. And then we have our main oils that we talk about, right? Our coconut oil, our avocado oil, or extra virgin olive oil. And then we have our natural spices, you know, our turmeric or thyme or rosemary mm -hmm. and basil, cumin, cumin mm -hmm. black, natural black pepper, organic. And, this, and the portions, you know, we don't really want to go over like five ounces, you know, of the portions that we eat. And we eat it in combination with our cruciferous vegetables and our dark leafy greens. So that is a now a healthy nutritional meal mm -hmm. for somebody that maybe want to have animal protein. Right. But right. Because so, one of so the top things that you want, no, it's the guess source. what they do now? Guess what they what? do now, right? Just not to divert, but you get all of this beyond me that they can make into burgers and they're going having bar barbecues this is this is the thing being a vegan people ask me are you a vegan are you a pescetarian or not are you a no i'm a healthier a healthier <laughs> mean i eat what is healthy what i need and i mean look if i need omega-3 mm -hmm. and i can't get particular lagoons or grains to give me that and i have access to wild salmon mm -hmm. and guess what i'm going to eat to get my omega-3 Wild salmon. Why, if I'm why in the middle of your omega three so important? Right, why because it's anti-inflammatory. Right, so it gets rid of and it calms down your inflammation and your immune system response. Mm -hmm. So now, if I'm in another location and I can't get wild salmon, but there's particular nuts that has selenium and omega three, like and I'm going to eat nuts. that. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand why you're eating and what you're eating it for and what your body can handle. This is called nutritional science right and this is what we're going to come out with near the end of the year we're going to really take this to a whole new level and this is why we're saying stick with us because we're not going to guide you wrong trust me we're going to be fully so, transparent yeah so so I, I love that um the other you know you just said so something else that was really heated in the comments and i i, I can't wait to get into this one Okay. Was what do you say to people who refer to eating meat as dead flesh and plants as eating live food? <sighs> Stupid. Okay. No, I because, don't say that. No, right. that's what they've because been taught. I think they're getting mixed taught. up. I think they're getting mixed up of. Um, it's what they've been taught. Right. Because what you have is that when you uproot a plant or you pick a fruit, you're taking it from its source of life, That's it. right? No but it has a lifespan. And I think what they are confusing is the lifespan to what is life force, right? So mm. unless that plant gets rerouted in soil or rerouted in soil or water to start sprouting, it's only going to have a lifespan time of days before it starts naturally deteriorating. And that happens with meat as well. That's the thing, it happens with meat as well. You, you get fresh meat and it only has a particular lifespan before it goes rotten and, you, and it's no good and it's poison. So I don't understand what they're saying. So they're saying it's electric, it's electric, it's electric. Well, everything has a frequency. Even the piece of wood has a frequency. So it's electric, right? So if everything has a frequency, then what determines dead or undead? And when you really look into chemistry and you define what's acid and alkaline, I don't know how you can have a alkaline diet and not have an acidic diet. You know why? Because your stomach so is highly it's acidic. High, and it it's from a pH the environment to break the food down. from a pH two down. That's highly acidic. That where alkaline comes is when it's excreted from your pancreas, mm -hmm. okay? To neutralize the acidity that your food has absorbed to get broken down from the stomach. So by the time it goes and gets to the ileum, 
which is the last stage of your small intestine. It's got three stages, right? And the ileum is the last stage. That's when the pancreas now excretes sodium bicarbonate, which is alkaline, to neutralize the acidity. So when it gets... So it doesn't pushed, burn coming out your butt. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you don't have... And this is the thing. Your blood is very sensitive. It has a very sensitive pH, which is at a 7.2. A hundred or tenth of a hundred out of out of whack, meaning too alkaline or too acidic, can kill you. Mm. So, wow. so this miseducation of electric food, right? And I'm not taking a dig at my old company, but it's just the I thing I'm it. saying. Electric that food, like that. <laughs> right? And I just want to clarify yeah. that. But electric not, food that and electric this and electric right. that. And alkaline this and alkaline that. When you get into chemistry and you learn biochemistry, you 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 you, you realize that Everything it's not what's yeah. being played so, so throughout. So to summarize, I have to summarize it because I know scientific. You do you go on. So I'm going to come back to the people and say that to make it clear. The minute you take you uproot a plant, it's no longer connected to its life source. It's no longer then living. Go, this whole go. idea. This whole idea that I'm only eating living things. It's not living. It's not living. Even if you eat it raw, it's not still living. So <laughs> it goes back to what we're saying. What are you eating for? You basically want your macro and micro nutrition. Right. right. Nutrients. nutrients right. right. You want your nutrients. Macro and micro nutrients. Mm -hmm. This is what you want to fuel your body with. So you've got to understand where is the best source of me getting that from. Right. And it's not always eating meat or it's not always eating plants. Mm -hmm. You have to find and, what is best for you. And when you are you. eating it, you have to have the right. So, so we'll give you an example. So in my instance, right, because right, we talked about how eating plants can also be harmful, right? In my instance, I can't really do a lot. I can't do nuts, really, right. because of the kidney, right. the kidney disease, right? So the kidney disease, they're high in uh, oxalates that Oxalate, cause yeah. kidney stones. They're high in phosphorus, um, yeah. as well as there are many things that are very Podium, high in fat. If they got sword on them. Yeah. Right. Well, I definitely did raw. I never did okay. so. So in other words, I have to look at what are the what are the modifications. There's looking at what's specific for your situation Absolutely. is the right Absolutely. diet for your situation. And that is the key. That's period. That's period. the key. Period. period. Whoever what you are. Works, yeah, what works for you, then let's do it at its best. Mm -hmm. Let's do it at its best. And that could be vegan, plant based, eating meat, keto, you name it. But it has, because there's people who rant about the keto diet. And then yeah. there's a lot of people say, nah, that didn't work for me. Right. That didn't work for right. me. Me having no carbs, I couldn't train. Right. Oh. Even though I was right. eating protein, I didn't have the energy that carbs gave me. So some people like, yeah, my training, my, my intensity of training went down because I just didn't have the fuel. I didn't have the energy because you have simple carbs mm -hmm. and complex, complex carbs, carbs, right? So you have to get your complex carbs in to fuel your body in order for if you're going to do intensive training. So, so let me throw a, a curveball at you here okay. because so this, you know, some people think, well, you know, well, what's the right diet for me? You know, so what about this whole idea that people had out there that was for eating for your blood type? Blood type. I knew you were going to say that. So, <laughs> when, so that was actually created by a Japanese scientist back in the 1800s. I forgot his name. But his hypothesis was that the different blood types should eat different portions or different meat and have a selective diet according to their blood type. Now, what determines your blood type are protein antigens. And what are antigens? Antigens are these bacteria that surround your blood. And that puts your blood cells, your red blood cells, in these blood groups, whether it's A, A, B, or A positive, or B positive, or B negative, and O positive, and O negative, and then you have recess. So that is not scientifically correct to eat for your blood type because those antigens can definitely change surrounding your blood according to your atmosphere your environment and your lifestyle so that didn't work that didn't work there 
there were still people that were eating meat and having positive and negative effects because what? there was other aspects. And this is why I say it goes into your genetics. Okay. So if you're saying you're eating for your genetics, that's where I'm saying there is now so that, so, scientific okay. data. So that, that actually comes even closer. Right, but, but let me just finish what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying now. There's scientific data to say that is yeah. now becoming your much genetics. more on the point for individuals is your genetics, is your GMO and what that is and how it reacts to the foods that you're eating, so not then, your blood type. So you know the next question, right? So right. the next question is, for instance, in our book, N Fibroids, we talk about how the COMT1 gene, which is a, poly, a variation, if there's a variation, a polymorphism, polymorphism. in the COMT1 gene, right. which, is, um, which actually that gene um, metabolizes helps if it helps facilitate the metabolism of estrogen, right? right. If that polymor if there's a polymorphism, a change in that gene that upregulates the um, metabolism of of estrogen, that means you will be more hyperactive to estrogen. Genetically, you will be right. more hyperactive, right? Your beta, your beta. Right. And then receptors. another person who who who's under who's not upregulated, it won't affect them the same way. Being and I'm bringing this up because. We've had clients who said, oh, my God, as soon as I started eating meat, I felt literally my fibroids growing, right? I felt well, like I saw well, major response or yeah, well, you, right away. The, the, one of the things we will advise people with fibroids is not to eat, definitely not to eat red meat. There you okay? go. Did you hear that? Definitely not to eat, eat red meat, right? Okay. The, the, the hormones or, or I, would, I would say that the hormone imbalance that the individual has when they're eating red meat, it's going to trigger the receptors, what they call the beta receptors of estrogen, which then will spike estrogen levels higher, which then sets, as you know, the, the stage the tone. and the it tone. The stage now, what that does fine. with high levels of estrogen, it now elevates progesterone, and progesterone what makes your fibers grow, right. not estrogen. So it sets the stage, right? so the... So, so the meat sets the stage for the fibroids to develop, and it also increases the progesterone levels, that which makes now causes them to the grow. Fibroids that actually makes grow. them grow. Right. So again, so, we break this down in the book and fibroids. If you definitely red meat. consider red meat, red meat. That's really right. important. Red meat, which includes ox, it includes Beef, lamb, it includes steak, lamb, steak, steak, right? So this is important because remember we said the question at the top of the, the, the opening was, can you eat meat and still be healthy? We said, depends on your health concern. Yeah. So please do not go out there and say, if you have fibroids, go just all you need to do is get grass-fed meat. That, that's not what we no, said. Yeah. Okay? That's not what we said. No. Okay? That's yeah. not what you we wanna, said. You want to stay, that protein, that you want to stay away is, from that. Because chicken is chicken different. I, it's poultry different. I wouldn't even eat chicken, that's, right? That's why I'm bringing right? it up. Yeah, I wouldn't. The only, if you have to have some form of protein, salmon. the only one I would recommend is, is the fish and wild salmon, to be exact. And why? Because of the high because omega. The, Break that down. Right. So the omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory, right, property. So it helps to regulate inflammation in the body. And when you have uterine fibroids, you've already got a tumor. So you've already got an inflammatory environment. environment. So that means your immune system is already being compromised. Because right. another thing that people don't understand is fibroids also is, can be caused by having a weak immune system. Mm -hmm. Okay? So omega-3 strengthens. Then the fish also has selenium, which is excellent, and zinc. These are two excellent minerals to help to boost and more base your immune system to fight against anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And inflammation and in the in body. And in the list of fish that we, we also break down in the food list, sea bass, sea high bass. in omegas too, yep. right? It's so, very high in omegas too. Right. So these fish actually help the immune system get rid of inflammation out of the when body. They are, when they are um, well, wild, 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 and prepared caught, properly. And prepared right? Remember, properly. they have to be prepared properly. They can't be prepared with inflammatory ingredients Barbecue, <laughs> right? sauce, it's full and of sugar all of that and deep and fried and, syrup and high fructose yeah. corn you know one of, one, of, one of the best i think is steam fish mm -hmm. i think that's one of the most healthiest way of the steam and i've had women now been having 
fibroids and salmon steamed and baked for months and they're feeling great and they actually feel their stomach getting flatter the pains and their cycles are much better awesome. because omega-3 is a major major um, mineral that the body relies on mm. so we just want to clear that up and again we just want to emphasize oh, that so i was going to ask about the fibroids though so with fiber it would would that also be relevant to people with cysts would that be relevant to people with endometriosis when you're talking about the so same endometriosis is a major compromise to the immune system yeah right mm -hmm. and again it's dealing with inflammation there's an inflammatory environment yeah. there mm -hmm. so anything that is causing inflammation mm -hmm. then having a bit of fish yeah. with omega-3 is going to aid to get rid of that right That's but not red not, not chicken not turkey not and not red meat no no but if, no. if you're not no. dealing with these conditions if you're not and dealing... you want to find the best way to still incorporate meat into your diet that's why we provided those guidelines absolutely right? yeah right? absolutely so the, the 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 and i know that I, I i promise not to keep you long um that you know one of the things that i i i hear all the time because I, I i threw you that curveball but what about there are two questions one is paleo what's like what are your thoughts on paleo because people like paleo versus keto versus like it's the same thing i mean again those diets that you're talking about it's what works for you right and i'll tell you this and i'll give you the answer in this this way your metabolism mm -hmm. some people say your metabolism is a reaction of your hormones fluctuating mm -hmm. some people say your metabolism reacts to your uh fat fluctuating or your calories intake no your metabolism is like a thermostat okay it reads and re and reacts to your stress levels, your stress levels, and you want to keep it balanced. So if you're in a room and it's too hot, you want to bring the temperature down. If it's too cold, you want to bring the temperature up. That's how your metabolism is. You want your metabolism to be balanced. So when you're on these particular diets, I've had clients, we have had clients for years that are being vegans, plant-based, and they're stressed. Mm -hmm. They're complaining. Sure. They are stressed. Sure. They're if it's losing stress weight. You, it's gonna count. It's counterproductive. Right. They're losing weight. They're fatigued. Mm -hmm. They're not energetic. They're miserable. Mm -hmm. Right. So going on these keto diet, like I said, I've had people saying I had to come off it. I had no energy to train. I and I and I do intensive training. It just didn't work for me. So you've got to find what, and you've got to listen to your metabolism. Don't think you're teaching in your metabolism your metabolism is gonna so, teach you so, okay so that's a very good point let's go there two things i want to quickly answer somebody in the comments and then i'm gonna come back to that somebody said what about adenomyosis adenomyosis is an inflammatory condition uh, just like endometriosis. Fibroids, yeah. to endometriosis right so that applies there somebody said what if your blood type is is O, for instance we talked about the blood type it's not really based on blood it's not about blah. It's not, it's I, i'm sticking more to genetics, genetics. So let's <laughs> right. go back to genetics so because i really want to hone in on this somebody say well how do i know what my genetics of, well, you could go and get a genetics? genetic test panel done mm -hmm. now some of them are you've got different layers right and well, intensity okay but of how... genetic testing is a whole different level right i'm saying not for, your food. Body, for food okay right so they would test your oh, genetic. They'll tell you, yeah, you have a tolerance to this, right. intolerance to and that, that and this, this is the food, yes. you, and, you, and it's in your genome, yes, right? This is a, a strip of your genes, and they would tell you these particular variants yeah. could, could cause the polymorphism, right? Yeah. Or some of them was like, that'd be great to eat, yeah. and, that, and they range from like $75 upwards, okay. you know? And that, so they can get that done. But that's what I would lean to, yeah. you know? And as, also, what about like, like in the consultation you go through okay what are you experiencing and then what are you absolutely. eating absolutely right? your body also your, your body's body gonna also you. let you know if you're feeling tired fatigued nauseous headaches dribbling eyes watering stuffy nose you know aches pains lack of energy yeah then you know what the same working, <laughs> the same working. <laughs> i gotta switch it up but if you're feeling vibrant and you're like, oh, my days, I'm bouncing off the walls of energy and I'm great. And, you know, I'm, I'm studying a 
obtaining information better. I'm, my skin's smooth. I'm sleeping well. You know, my moods are great. I just want to give love and share happiness to everybody. Then it, 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 I think that's a sign and an indication you're on the right path. Right, so you know? last two questions. So, so in other words, we help you to read what your body is telling yes. you, right? By Absolutely. Through the consultations, we help Absolutely. you to read things what your body is telling like you always what say jesse you? when you go to see the doctors there's two experts in the room right right there's that's you right. with your body and the other experts is of the the physicians yeah, in yeah. the line of work what they've mm -hmm. studied mm -hmm. so yeah, so so this brought me down to two last questions one is somebody gonna say well wait a minute are y'all gonna turn around and say that dairy is good please let's shut that down right now all right so so you've got two things that stand out with dairy. You've got a protein and an enzyme. So let's deal with the protein first called casein. Casein. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people can't, that particular enzyme or protein, sorry, cannot be digested. Or oh, it takes extremely long to be digested. And anything that stays in your system and takes extremely lengthy amount of time to be processed and broken down and digested is not good. So casein is almost like the dairy twin of gluten in wheat. So that's one. Then you have lactose. And with brown black people, you know, we're tolerant to lactose. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. right? Detolerant, sorry. And the reason why is because we do have the enzyme lactase. Mm -hmm. Lactase is... is the enzyme for lactose, mm -hmm. right? However, it doesn't do it. It doesn't do its job, right? Especially in black and brown people, it doesn't do its job. That enzyme is pretty non-productive, so that's why we find it hard or um, distressing when we eat or drink dairy and at a large volume. So it becomes. A inflammatory it causes an inflammatory effect because it can't be processed and it cannot be broken down because and if it's so between the protein the casein, and the enzyme the casein and the lactose right those the, two between things. those two things that are in dairy products our body struggles struggle so now it becomes an inflammatory environment and it causes inflammation mm -hmm. remember 70 to 80 percent of your immune system is where in your gut in the gut so once you start seeing something hanging around for too long, these boys say, hey, what's going on here? They start, and it causes an inflammation. So you can start looking at things like SIBO, dysbiosis, H. pylori, all of those. Gut issues. Mm -hmm. Gut issues, mm -hmm. Crohn's, mm -hmm. right? And then also with the inflammation, you, we t you, the phlegm, the congestion, it can start right. causing so respiratory Right, so now you start infection. bringing up phlegm mm -hmm. coming through, you know, and stuffy nose so it's, it starts of your histamines starts mm -hmm. work getting elevated right and those white blood cells and those antibodies like your ige and your igas will start elevating and now your eyes will water itchy nose is stuffing all of these reactions your body's actually saying listen one we can't process can't this it. it's taking too long to process your enzymes are not getting it down this this protein ain't getting digested. It's causing mayhem. So no, in a, in a, in a, in a nutshell, we can't redeem. There are, there are, there redeem. no health we benefits to dairy. No, so this is not redeem. redeemable. So I'm going to say it clear. Because of the casein protein, that's very, um, a, it's, it's a struggle. It's too difficult to digest. It's the protein well that well. makes milk white, mm -hmm. right? Now, casein it's a protein that has all the amino acids to help to build muscles, mm -hmm. right? So if people can digest it correctly, because remember, not everybody's sensitive to gluten, mm -hmm. right? So if you have a whole wheat like spelt, then you can get some of the benefits of sprouted spelt if you're not sensitive to gluten, right? Casein is the same kind of thing, but maybe 80 to 90% people find it very hard to digest. Right. Right. You know, and it's maybe found in ice cream, mm -hmm. milk, the cheese, cheese and dairy, right? And that, so it gives that milky looking, and even children, right? It's in the infant um, formulas, right? It's in children's formulas. 
And so there's that. And then we then the then the enzyme, the the um Lact lactase, mm -hmm, right? Which is supposed to deal with the lactose of milk or dairy. Mm -hmm. That lactase enzyme is this it doesn't work or it's not functional to its full so, capability. So what like, about people who say, Oh, I just need my lactase pills, then I can take milk. You could. You could try that. You see, I'm not gonna rule anything out. You could try it, but you gotta well, look at the, the other thing? side. Then you've got to look at another side that we didn't address, right? So let's go back a little bit in history. Way back when we had goats and cows and we milked them naturally. Remember, that milk was only preserved for five, seven days, shelf life, the longest. There you go. And they would drink it and be healthy. Now you've got milk shelf life for nearly a month. What are they putting in there? Those chemicals that they're adding to it to give it a longer shelf life is what's going to cause an inflammatory That's disruption it. and in, in the body. So, no. So, you, okay. okay. So, be clear on that. Okay. Right? The, infl in, the inflammatory properties of dairy make it actually unhealthy to consume. Absolutely. I, I'm just making that very clear because we want to un understand. It's about what the science shows you, right? is that what the science shows you is that it's the casing and the and then of course the chemicals that are used the preservatives this you're not getting a cow that you're milking you know out, outside somebody whatever somebody says well i have a farm i'm gonna use my cow is my and my cow is grass-fed and it's right. and it gets, great. Well, if they're taking that milk from the they, cow and they're they, not casing sensitive then they and they could possibly get the benefits if, from that. If they're not casein sensitive, but your body will tell you if you are. Absolutely. Right. You gotta listen to your body. Absolutely. You gotta see what your body can handle. Right. You gotta see what your body can and, handle. And signs like let's talk about inflama inflammatory signs like congestion, right? Like things start to get swollen. Right. right? So you got like you start so to have pain. The full, right. There's four Break stages of inflammation, as you know, yep. right? So there's mm -hmm. redness. Mm -hmm. There's heat. There's swelling mm -hmm. and then there's pain, mm -hmm. soreness, mm -hmm. right? So once you get, now, once you go through those four stages or, or those four stages the, present themselves, any of them, uh, any of those stages present themselves when you're eating after a meal and that, you know, you know, your body, something's wrong. You need to start looking a little deeper and start making some modifications that suits your body and what your body can handle. Because everybody has strengths and weaknesses, right? And what we want to do is, is, is filter out those weaknesses and let those become our strengths. So then we have a perfect balanced diet and we have ultimate health. So you have to be, you know, you have to be a bit of a lunatic or crazy to think that one diet is going to cover everybody. The whole whatever the human the race, planet. the black race, the whole, the whole planet. Yeah, you have to be well, a little you know, bit delusional. The way, the way I like to say is, what we want to do is become educated, and that's again. Remember, for the detox now, what we want to do is we're providing education and supplements that help combat those disparities, Absolutely. right? That lead to inflammatory conditions, chronic disease, lower life expectancy rates, reproductive health issues. So when we look at that, the education around that is understanding okay, now I know this is what my body is telling me. Because what we want you to do is to become what we say the hero in the story of your healing and not the accomplice in the story of disease. Right. So it's like, if this is making me sick, I need to stop exactly. it. Exactly. Because it's making me sick, yeah, right? That's just if I keep, sense. If I keep <laughs> ignoring it and it continues to make me sick, it's going to complicate and become a you, bigger issue. You know right? what I think is wrong, Jesse, overall, is that within our community the black community we have so much misinformation yeah so much uneducated information and uneducated people are out there with influence because they're charismatic they're yeah. pleasing on the eye yeah, every, you everybody's know. an expert on on social media right right and it it is it's damaging yeah and it's becoming damaging and we just got to try to do our best to clean it up and i know a lot of people out there that are with us and working towards that that are black yeah. female and males that are pushing the truth and the science and yeah you see how we get shone upon just by saying eating meat is healthy eating meat. oh you're eating flesh you're eating the devil you're this yeah i mean come on man come on 
And then when you ask them basic questions, so then define holistic or right. define alkaline. Right. You really start, you know, you don't get into a debate, don't get into an argument because we're not arguing, right? We're just simply saying you can be healthy and eating meat. But then when we ask them, okay, so what, what, what do you eat? Well, I, I'm a raw alkaline. I'm a vegan. Okay, define that. You know, define it because that's what you live your life by. Then you find they have no education because they can't define it. They can't explain themselves. And then that says it all. So now you're following a trend. Now you're following a trend. No, my life, my life or my health is too valuable for me to follow a trend because it looks good, feels, looks good, sounds good. But that, there's a lot of them that doesn't even feel good. And they don't even look good mm -hmm. because of a result of it. So their That's body true. started to That's tell true. them, you we know, we're my nutrition. We, we, we are lacking nutrients. Yeah. We're, you know, so... Yeah. It, it, it's no, a lot of work we've got to do to clean it up. The other thing that came up to me is that there are people... So for me, holistic living is also taking care of our planet. Okay, that's a very important thing. That's part of why we use, you know, compostable, biodegradable materials in our shipping materials. Um, it is why we're doing this detox swap all month. Um, right. where we're going to be going into showing you, like, again, we started off with meats, but we're going to be going into things that are beauty products and household products. Absolutely. Because seventy percent of the toxins that are that are damaging us, harming us, are actually found in our home. Yeah, in the clean, in the clean disruptors. In our water, yeah. you know, more than fifty percent. The recent study showed that more than fifty percent of our tap water is actually um, is contaminated with PFAS, which are for, forever chemicals. Um, like in my home, that's why we have a reverse osmosis system that filters yeah. the entire I mean, house. New York, New the York entire waters. house. It's really bad. But you know, it's not just New York. It is South. It is everywhere. Yeah. If you go I know, but I've seen water in New York walk on its own. Be quiet. And attack it's, the rats. <laughs> so, so please, you know, continue to follow us for that purpose. So Absolutely. that, you know, you can be quick. Because once you make certain changes, you know, it's like, okay, now I'm using, you know, um, biodegradable, compostable, or, you know, eco-friendly, but non-toxic laundry detergent. Now Absolutely. that's one way the toxins are no longer getting into your home, right? Or hand soap or, you know, lotion or whatever it may be, which, you know, we'll be sharing a lot of these things um, this month. But the key thing for us to be equipped with is the knowledge and the information around this. So I, I started off by saying holistic to me also means taking care of the earth. So eliminating as much plastic as possible, right? That's a really big thing because plastic has what BPA, B, um, BPA, which is one of those phthalates, one of those chemicals that are forever chemicals that are hormone disruptors, cause reproductive damage as well as carcinogens. Absolutely. So for us, we, again, equipping you, it's not just, it's, it's everything around your home. That's holistic. Right. It's not just, it's what's affecting your body, your spirit, your mind over all over right absolutely so when i think about meat some people may say they don't want to eat meat because oh, of fine. you know because of what farms do to in the yeah, environment that's because fine that's fine we, we, we will help you to be the best vegan plant-based yeah. individual we got recipes and, we got chefs we got the, everything you need also it's also understanding that some but it's not all grass-fed beef is different than beef that's on a dairy farm right absolutely. cows on a dairy farm absolutely and, and how they're damaging the environment steroids yeah and that's to eat how every and everything the around absolutely Correct. there that's is critical. a cultural there is a cultural cultivated method to 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 raising these animals what we recommend you to right. eat it is not just these local conventional farms right. that you go to that these farmers are just selling all their meat to these local food markets and to make money. they're actually killing the environment in their right. neighborhood but you know what's interesting for people to research look how much damage veganism uh, is doing yeah. to the planet with what look how much with damage veganism is doing to the planet with and, what with what and, no, that's something I want people to go okay. research. Okay. I'm okay. this, well, give them a little. Really, give them a little. It's a really little damaging. To it's, really damaging it's really damaging the planet, right? A lot of vegans are understand they they're talking about animals and cruelty to animals and all of that, but they have to understand when plants are toxic as well. Mm -hmm. There's certain toxic plants, mm -hmm. and all of this substituting meat that they're producing. Yeah. Now they're going into the laboratory and creating fake meat, yeah. you know, and yeah. calling it meat, not even vegan meat not now, even. fake meat. But it's the same principle 
of what they're doing, creating fake meat, is creating this vegan meat. So all you guys are eating your Beyond and Impossible burgers, mm -hmm. thinking that you're vegan and healthy. you're healthy. And a grass -fed no, burger. there's more. I will rather have a grass-fed burger mm -hmm. than a Beyond burger because I'm getting more nutritional benefit out of it. My body and is no actually getting And no inflammatory properties, right? And no and inflammatory no properties infl whatsoever. That's important to understand. Right? No inflammatory now, now, if, you're, if you have a health condition that allows you to digest it right. properly. Let's and in there too. so, so my, my thing is, is, is not to attack anyone mm -hmm. with whatever choices they make. This is Plant based, vegan, mm -hmm. eating meat, fish, pres pres well, what potato, did they say? But I like my alcohol. We're going to tell them, okay, alcohol is just killing Yeah, there's no places. benefits in there's alcohol. No benefits. No benefits in alcohol. No. All right. Last question. Last question because I know we're wrapping up. So, these supplements we've been talking about them all month long they are a prevention kit it's our balance and there's also strength for men if y'all ain't know we came out with strength for the men oh you got it there you and go man mask the anti-inflammatory so, as well as d3 so the reason why i'm holding up these two right because most men like to work out in the gym okay so they want to have their stamina and energy the testosterone to work out. Yeah. And then we usually overdo it and we get pains and sore. Which one? And stiffness. Wait, what are you holding up? What are you joint holding health. up? Oh, joint health. Okay. And well, but wait, but wait. So you go into that and then I'll go into the other one. Go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. So strength is for a natural, natural rising of nature to any occasion. Uh, to any occasion. For working out? Working or out for in the gym out. and in the bedroom. Uh, exactly. <laughs> right? And then joint health is the day after. If you've got any back pains, <laughs> knee pains, and shoulder works. pains, oh my arm God, pains. joint health but work. Almost if you are instantly. suffering with any form of stiffness, yeah. um, autoimmune, because this month is auto auto inflammatory month, mm -hmm. right? So look out about for joint arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Any form of stiff aches, pains, yeah. joint pains, Wake stiffness, up with hurt knees. Hurt knees. Right. I'm telling you, this is it. Yeah. The joint health. All right. So these so, are the two that I will recommend all day, every now, day. Now, but Especially let's go for back, men. Let's go back to the not, not that but that joint is not just for men. Joint is for Oh women. yeah, joint it's is for but it's for everybody. I was mentioning yeah. for us fellas. So going back to the mass balance and D three, because they're in our prevention kit. Um, because somebody said, Oh well why you know why do you keep saying well if we eat the food because you started touching on it earlier i want you to talk about the role because you actually formulated these Absolutely. you are our master herbalist yep. and you That's formulated right. this right so how important is it to incorporate the right supplements why do we keep saying that like if we get our nutrition from our food then there's no problem right but why are we saying that things like the prevention daily kit for someone who doesn't have an illness but is really just looking to have general health and then for those who are trying to recover from a surgery or they're trying to prevent like the, you know uh, inflammatory conditions so, of any kind. so you, you, you see what you just said right so you gave mm -hmm. several different scenarios mm -hmm. location environment you forgot economics financial yeah, yeah. some people can't afford to necessarily maintain in how they would like to eat. Some people need a lot of work in health and the food, you know, remember you have to have portions and servings. You yeah. can't overindulge. Yeah. But they might still be lacking certain nutrients and minerals. Their immune system could be still compromised. Mm -hmm. The environment that we live in, we're constantly getting attacked by certain chemicals in the air and the atmosphere. We just talked about the water right? supply. That's right? not just what you're drinking, right. it's what you're washing your hands. What you're washing your, you're washing I mean, your, I mean, we're just constantly bombarded with dishes. different viruses and pathogens and infections and what everything on top of COVID, everything else on top of COVID. So yeah. the supplements is very important. And those particular three supplements deal with three major functionalities in the body that when they work in units, they are ones that start from the root start from the root right that helps to prevent critical health critical conditions health. down the road mm -hmm. your d3 you know from your calcium your bones mm -hmm. your immune system right uh, insomnia hair insomnia, loss, hair loss, hair loss right? anxiety depression anxiety. right 
depression is a big one. Right. Absolutely. Then you've got your um, balance, right? Yep. That's for your females. They, you know, and uh, the male virgin is strength, mm -hmm. right? And this is for your hormone imbalance. Mm -hmm. Then we have the mighty mass. Oh my God. The mass is for your immune system, okay? Because anytime you have chronic inflammation, now remember, there's two forms of inflammation. There's your acute inflammation that only supposed to last for a short period of time. So if you maybe have a cut or a bruise, inflammation will get sent, like, and cortisol will come to assist to stop it spreading and help, and help to um, heal the bruised tissues or damaged tissues or veins, right, cause of that injury. But it's only supposed to last for a short period of time. When it goes for a lengthy period of time, now it goes from acute into a chronic. Now the immune system is going to start reacting and it can turn into an autoimmune disorder and your immune system be compromised. So this is where your mask comes in to help to support that immune system, to keep everything on the DL, chill, keep everything on the chill, chill, and making sure that the inflammation is restricted and controlled Regular. because it's a time, it brings it in. If it, if it keeps, keeps expanding over time and over time, it goes from acute into chronic and you don't want it to go to chronic because that's when it leads to critical health conditions. So this is why these supplements help. With, whether you're vegan or eating meat, mm -hmm. they're going to assist right. where the weakness or the help is needed the most in your physiology. Yeah. Okay? So you know, I supplementation think, is very important. And something that I heard you say earlier is that the just the, the environment that we live in, period, the nutrition, even the grass-fed, even the organically grown, it's still so depleted in its nutrients compared to what our bodies need because of the farming industry, because of the changes. Like I've heard people talk about that in depth. You want to go into that some? A lot of it's depleted of our natural minerals, right? So you got your B12 is major bacteria. It's a major bacteria, but the body needs it. It does mm -hmm. so much stuff for your brains, your guts, your bones, your central nerve system. Yeah, energy. I mean, B12 is massive. But back in the days, you get a potato with dirt on it, and your mom wouldn't wash it. She would cook it just like that because of the B12 that was in the soil. It's no longer there. Mm. Oh, it's very depleted. So where are we going to get it from? We have to supplement. Right. We have to supplement. The earth is naturally crying out, saying, I'm depleting of natural minerals and vitamins that I usually provided in a abundance mm -hmm. in abundance but because of all these chemicals and man-made machines and man-made experiments it's the plea gmo right gmo um you know the list goes on right the list goes on with all the chemicals that they have so we have to supplement yeah. we have yeah. to supplement the ones the plants that we're finding the herbs that we're finding that we can still you know extract those medicinal Perfect. and constituent properties from we definitely still need to take them on a day-to-day -day basis as long side with our foods and our exercises and, and you know our what? sleep. And I heard you say earlier, and it's the increased level of toxicity of the environment that we also are fighting off of, right? Right. Like, again, it's the water, it's the air. When we had that air quality issue, you know, it's, it's in the 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 soaps and the detergents and the the literally it's in fire retardant clothing and furniture yeah. like it is literally and you can go crazy when you think about it like it can really and that's why what we're trying to do is really educate you on controlling what you can control yeah listen you can't control everything no. right you, 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 the air, what you're going to do, have masks that you, you know, and I'm not talking about from the pandemic. I'm talking about like an oxygen mask that you walk around with for the rest well, of the Well, some people are doing that in South Korea. Wow. And China. Why? Wow. Because it's that toxic. Wow. It's wow. that toxic. Wow. Yeah. You know what? I pray that's not us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here it is, y'all. You know, I think we answered all the questions. Um, and I, I uh, and I, I think the key thing for you is to understand that whatever, you know, if you're just looking to, to transition to a healthier life, you're ready to say, you know what, I know that I, I don't feel my best. I want right. to feel better. Or you're dealing with a health condition. 
we have free literally free literally free consult options every week oh, yeah. okay free dr amun does free 10 minute consults on fridays we have free group consults throughout the week and then if you need something very specific you can book a private one um we have tons of resources specifically to help and support you and you know go to the detox now because we're here for you wherever you are you can take our free quiz um that is uh a lot of people have been happy with that because they can yeah. kind of get quick information if they, if they don't necessarily want to consult and you can save 25 percent um off your first um you know entire cart based on using the quiz the bottom line is we're committed to making sure that we provide you and we support you with the right support services to not just um, be healthy for a moment, you know, but no, actually we want live it. Detox. Yeah, we want longevity. Live it, live it, live it, right? So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Amun. Um, oh, it's you always know, a pleasure. Just, always a pleasure. All right, then, my sister. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate y'all. Bye-bye. Right, Dr. Amun. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope that um, we'll definitely post this because a lot of y'all were saying, you know, please save it. Um, download, sign up for our free newsletter because we've been sending out the food list in the newsletter. All right. It's going to be coming out again. We updated our food list specifically um, with meat guidelines, poultry guidelines, um, the do's and don'ts of how to cook and prepare your food so that you're actually um, not toxifying it. All of that is in the food list and um, you get it when you actually are signed up to our newsletter. So sign up for free um, and save 25% right at thedetoxnow.com. Um, and we are here for you and know you are not alone.